So this leachate, uh, you call it, d uh, Dump, what it, like dump juice, basically, uh, but this is the radioactive material that's here in this landfill now leak 10,000 gallons leaking here at the bottom of this hill. We don't know if it's radioactive or not. I'm really hoping that they're going to test it down there. It looks like Department of Natural Resources is, but what we know for certain is that, again, the leachate has leaked about 10 to 11,000 gallons, and it's down there in a field. We can't get to it. That's private property. We're on a public street right now. We see uh, Metropolitan Sewer District right now out here. They're trying to suck it up. They're trying to suck as much of it can, as they can get in these, and I'm really hoping that they do test it. But this is life every day here. You never know you're in the middle of dinner when something like this is going to happen, and you can smell it. I have a horrible headache. I know your eyes look like they're, they're watering right now. Yeah, right. I mean, imagine living next to this. Right. And this is what you've been trying to get the city to understand, that this is happening and that they put out that worst case scenario of three to six months and it could happen any day. It could happen today. Right. You know, the worst case scenario is the fire meets the waste, but they forget that this kind of stuff happens all the time at this landfill. You know, you a massive leak in a field next to a creek down there. This is, this is an out of control site. What's happening down there is not controlled. The company, the EPA, they say this is a controlled site. I beg to differ. Look at what's happening right there. All right, Leanne Mackett reporting for InfoWars.com. We're going to wrap up here and follow up. We're going to just get as much information as we can right now. But again, this is breaking right now. The leachate is leaking out of the Westlake landfill uh, here. Leanne Mackett reporting for InfoWars.com. Stay tuned to InfoWars.com for more reports. Get out of here. Get out of here so you're not sick. Get out of here so you're not sick. We've already been exposed. This is a protest, and this is a riot. If you can't tell the difference, then you are part of the problem. Infowars.com. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888 253 3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Break down why you're so proud of these filters. Well, I mean, this, this, the Alexa Pure is really a culmination of all of my experience. It was posed to me as an extremely challenging uh, project. Uh, they wanted a product that would actually operate without any electricity, so it had no pressure. You had to do it all by gravity, and they needed they really effectively said we need everything imaginable to be removed efficiently, way higher than 99%. And so the result was it, it was, it, it's an extreme challenge. I uh, worked on it uh, for quite a long time. And basically what we've done is we created a, the only filter, to my knowledge, that hits all three. It will remove effectively all the major uh, metals, uh, all the major non-metals such as fluoride, it will take out uh, all known microbiological threats, including viral, bacterial, and cysts. And it will take out uh, organic chemicals of pretty much everything, with, with, without exception. It's a very, very powerful device. I don't believe that there's anything else out there in the world that can do that, especially under gravity flow conditions. The fit and finish are fantastic. No, no compromise was made on the quality of the uh, construction. Um, so, I mean, it's really a, a remarkable achievement on their part, and uh, I feel very proud, actually, to be part of the team that put that together. Uh, what's your view overall on fluoride? 
Well, okay. So we actually tested against both the fluoride ion and the fluorosilicate that you mentioned, which is the additive that people put into water uh, under federal control. And basically, uh, we removed both of them with equal efficiency. So we wanted to be sure that no matter how fluoride is added to the water, it can be intercepted and removed. Um, So that's how we've dealt with that. All I can tell you is that we tested against all known fluoride chemicals that are added to water the new ones and the old ones, and uh, we remove them all of equal efficiency. And it's your belief that this is the best gravity-fed filter of the design out there available to the public? Uh, Without a doubt. I mean, most of these uh, gravity flow filters are at best uh, simple particulate filters. They remove dirt and and, uh, debris, sediment. Uh, They're not going to be capable of intercepting a viral particle. Uh, to the degree, we're talking quantitative reduction below detection. No one can touch that kind of capability. Well, I'm impressed, and I want to thank you so much for your time today. It is the Alexa Pure Pro family of water filtration systems available, uh, discounted exclusively at InfoWarsStore.com. I want to thank uh, Mr. Redhawk for allowing us to be part of the launch of this. Um, It's on sale right now for their main unit, $177.00. Leading competitors that aren't even as good or more than that. And they've also got uh, the, sur- the survival spring uh, type uh, straw system for survival uh, that uh, is an absolute must have. Joining me in the studio is Zoltan Isfan. He is founder of the Transhumanist Party. You are now Zoltan taking a bus tour. Is that right? You're you're going across country with your with your. I think it's the immortality bus. Is that what it's called? <laughs> Indeed, it is um, a, a bus that looks essentially just like a coffin, and we're trying to <laughs> <laughs> provoke a, a conversation about life extension. Hmm. Okay, all right. And we've got a video, and I want to run this video and and ask you about uh, what you're doing with this and and why you would do this. We got a video of you getting a chip put in. Are you guys ready to roll that video? Can we can we do that? Okay, let's roll that video. Yeah, but you have the chip already built into the uh, thing. Or yep, you... it's already in the injector. Okay. So it's uh, sterilized and ready to go. Yeah. See that little pop feeling? That was not. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's done much worse over the last few days. How long ago was this? About five weeks ago. Yeah. Jammed it in the ladder. Here, we'll, we'll it's, give a, some blood. it's a pretty big needle. Uh, it's hard to show. Look, there's some blood. <laughs> but it's a 60 second procedure. In fact, maybe it's a 10 second procedure done quickly. It's definitely, a, it hurts more than a normal, you know, that's for sure, but uh, it's a pop. Are you, are you feeling any more? And they're putting that in your hand I mean, for people who are listening on the radio. They're putting a, a chip in your hand. Indeed, yes. And, and what is this chip going to do? Well, it, it's very rudimentary, honestly. It doesn't really do much, but, um, for example, uh, with the bus, if you have the right uh, software and the right uh, technology, you can start your bus by waving your hand over the ignition instead of having a key. Or, for example, to get into the Alex Jones studio, you could just swipe your hand at the security, and that would let you right in. Um, in the future, though, it's going to be able to do things like you can pay with it. Um, you can uh, It'll monitor um, your temperature, your hydration levels, and maybe even tell you whether you're getting enough uh, iron from broccoli or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it's going to do a lot of uh, different things like that. And then, of course, the government can also track your position all the time with it. So that is... Uh, absolutely a concern it's a concern yeah. of mine um but at the same time uh, you know i'm just sort of like the iphone or the smartphones uh, you know you, I, I guess there's a trade-off between your yeah. surveillance and security issues versus the government kind of prying into your your life yeah yeah exactly that's always a trade-off and you know i, I was one of the first people to get an iphone I, I i got the very first iphone on the very first day i i, I love technology and i gotta say when i'm finished with this contract <laughs> I'm going back to some kind of a burner phone because I'm just fed up with the surveillance state. And so I'm willing, now I've looked at this and it's like, I will put up with a lot of inconvenience for my privacy because I think that's something that I don't want to give up. But let me ask you about health concerns. Aren't you concerned about the health issues of having that there? Because there's been some reports of uh, animals who've gotten these kinds of chips, developed tumors at the site, uh, that this is something you put in fairly recently. There hasn't been a lot of of uh, of history with these kind of chip implants? Are you concerned about possible health effects? So, yes, I am. But so far, at least in the biohacker community, 
I haven't heard of anything negative specifically with anyone that has received this chip. Now, it's really the size of a grain of rice. It's tiny. Um, that said, I do want to say, you know, my, my wife is a surgeon, and uh, she said, you know, you, you do need to be cautious that what if this got free and went into the bloodstream and clogged an artery or something. So there are dangers like that. However, I have not heard of one like that. And I think a lot of people bring up a lot of the dangers, but so far there's very little evidence um, that would prove contrary to this. Again, not that many people have had it, and I'm very happy that I did it. Uh, I would probably do another one. I'm a big advocate for cranial implants. You know, as you may know, there's about half a million people in the world right now that have cranial implants, brain implants. Most of them are cochlear implants that help with deafness so that people can hear, but some are already um, working towards epilepsy or working to help with Alzheimer's. So I think the era of implants is coming and um, it's not, you know, uh, even though I got this tiny thing in my hand, it, we're talking on the next 10 years, many people are going to be doing, there's a, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. And the real question is um, how can we get the public to feel secure with them? And especially how can we make sure the government doesn't abuse it? Yeah. Yeah. And of course, a part of that is informed consent. I mean, personally, if I'm looking at this, I want to know that there's enough of a history with something, anything that I put in my body, whether it's an implant or whether it's a vaccine or, uh, you know, any, anything that is new, I want to know what the history of this is. I want to see the studies. I want to see studies that have been done by people besides the people who created the device or who created the, the vaccine to know if it is uh, something that's safe. And the important part of that is not only the informed part of that, but it's also the consent part of that. As a as somebody who is running in a political party, would you support uh, mandatory uh, implants of people? No, of course not. But what I would support is a development from the government, you know, putting real money into it. For example, through Obama's Brain Initiative, $70 million is now going to DARPA, and they are trying to develop a chip to um, help with depression from soldiers coming back from wars and conflict zones. And I think that's an excellent use of, um, you know, cranial implants is to try to cure something like depression. I mean, Do you really believe that that's the mission of DARPA? No, no, I'm just saying I mean, that's, I mean, that's seriously, one of the things. Seriously, I mean, DARPA has used these kinds of things, benign uses, and come up with it and said, you know, we just want these killer robots because we might have to go into a nuclear power plant like Fukushima someday. If you go back and you look at the history of DARPA, there's an excellent book. Uh, Alex has interviewed the author, Andy Jacobson, The Pentagon's Brain, going back to the 1950s, the 1960s. I mean, DARPA is there to create weapon systems. They're not there to help people. And, you know, when I look at these brain systems, these, these brain initiatives that DARPA is part of, I have to remember that after World War II, after the Korean War, they were doing frontal lobotomies on people. Massive front, the Pentagon was doing. You, know, you got PTSD, we'll give you a frontal lobotomy. This allows them to do this electronically, not having to use, you know, in a much cleaner way, <laughs> okay? So, I, I, I mean, again, it comes down to the, to the element of trust and, and the whole fact that DARPA would come out with these programs and put a beard on it and say, oh, this is for peaceful, benign use. I just don't buy it. Well, and, and I understand your worries, and of course, you're older than me, so you've seen more of the history of DARPA, but... At the same time, I think we are really just talking about depression for soldiers. So it's hard to see how that could go wrong. Now, I do understand about the war machines. You're right. There is a long history of developing, um, you know, w war toys. And uh, frankly, my political party and myself are pretty against war. In fact, one of our main initiatives is to try to divert money from defense and bomb making and wars to, uh, to health, to science and technology. So I'm definitely an anti I wouldn't say anti-military, but a huge part of my platform is pulling money away from the military and putting it directly into scientists' hands. Yeah, I would like to pull the, the money away from the military and pull it out of the government's hands, quite frankly. I would like for us to be able to make our own decisions, to make our voluntary associations, to fund our own research if we wish, to be able to afford to buy whatever we wished for our own health. But of course, you know, as long as we send all of our money to Washington and then have them make those decisions for us, that won't happen. Um, Let's talk a little bit about uh, your transhumanist uh, party. Let's talk about the platform here. Here's the first one. Implement a transhumanist bill of rights mandating government support of longer lifespans via science and technology. And I, I want to know what the bill of rights is, but you kind of lost me there when you use the word mandating, okay? Because I'm not really big on mandates, especially when it's uh, something that's coming from the federal government. No, of course, and mandate is kind of a strong word. But basically, we want to have it so that, and this is one of the reasons why I'm driving this bus across the country, we're going to be delivering this Transhumanist Bill of Rights to the U.S. Capitol building in about uh, five weeks. And um, 
We want to make it so that politicians cannot step into the way of people's health. We feel that um, politicians throughout history, for example, with George W. Bush stopping stem